Hello everyone. Uh, this week I want to talk about a show that's on the Discovery Channel in Canada called Canada's Worst Driver. It just wrapped up its 11th season. Now, after watching the first season way, way back, you know, 10 years ago, I... Uh, I thought the show was brilliant, um, actually. Uh, the structure was brilliant. The overall point of it is brilliant. You know, I'm not actually surprised that it's made 11 seasons. And in fact, during the finale on Monday, uh, they actually were advertising for nominations for season 12. Uh, which makes sense, because it's uh, a popular show in Canada, obviously. Uh, it wouldn't still be on the air if it wasn't. Uh, you know, so, you know, overall, I think the show is absolutely brilliant, and I hope it continues. Um, they kind of hit the jackpot with the format, um, with the, uh, I guess, uh, sort of a elimination game show format. Uh, you have your nominees, usually eight of them. Uh, at the start of the season, uh, nominated by, you know, people close to them. And uh, over the course of the season, uh, each episode, normally, uh, the most improved or uh, the safest remaining driver or whatever will be graduated back onto public roads, which, you know, works kind of nicely. Uh, and most of the time, uh, when they have a graduate, it does kind of make sense. Okay, so the way it works is they do challenges, and based on the performance and the challenges, you know, they, they're they uh, observed by the experts, the panel of experts, which includes a couple of driving instructors, and uh, uh, in recent seasons anyway, a uh, therapist, and you have... Uh, the legal expert. Uh, in season 11, that was uh, uh, Tim Danter as the head driving instructor, Shamala Kiru as the therapist, uh, Philippe Letourneau as uh, the stunt driving expert, high performance driving expert, and Cam Woolley as the legal expert. Cam is a former uh, police officer uh, so he definitely does know uh, his uh, rules of the road. Uh, uh, so while he doesn't appear in uniform anymore, he's retired from the police. Uh, he did in early uh, seasons, as he was still a police officer then. Okay, so they're all joined by Andrew Younghusband, who is the host, and he's been the host since the first uh first episode and they hit the jackpot with him he's uh he's brilliant as the host uh okay so over the years uh they've spent a lot of time explaining how to drive better they've explained the mechanics of what the bad drivers are doing wrong in various situations and so on Granted, there's uh, an element of uh, sensationalism in the editing of the show. Uh, it is entertainment, after all. Uh, now, this is a show that's in the, about the same vintage as Mythbusters. And, uh, you know, well, Mythbusters uh, is a little bit uh, older, I believe. But, uh, but anyway, it... Uh, it has evolved over the years. Uh, initially, it was the most improved in each episode that would be graduated, no matter if they were the best remaining driver or not. They have kind of evolved that so that if they've got someone that's clearly head and shoulders above the rest, that person will get graduated. And, you know, when you think about it, that does make sense. So that kind of evolution is helpful. Uh, and they didn't, uh, as I recall, start with having a therapist. That came along as a result of uh, it becoming clear that a lot of the 
uh, bad drivers are bad drivers not so much because of lack of skill, although that is a factor, but there are psychological factors that make them bad drivers and they need some help to straighten that out. Uh, over the years we've had situations ranging from the nominator actually being the problem uh, to uh, like the, the main problem to uh, severe anxiety disorders. And then, of course, you've got your run-of-the-mill average people that, uh, you know, they might have some sort of an issue. Uh, they might not understand how to deal with it. They might not understand they have an issue, that sort of thing. But they're generally, you know, of sound mind, I guess. They don't have substantial issues. So... Great. Uh, they've had all sorts of uh, random types on there. They've had people on there that, uh, well, that really shouldn't be driving. And uh, they've had a few where they've actually, they had one that they expelled because he just wasn't learning. Uh, he had the skills to drive, but he wouldn't learn. Uh, they've had a couple that had to bow out for personal reasons. Uh, in one case, the personal reason was directly related to the reason the show exists. And, you know, that... Uh, they, they played that really well when, when, that, when, that, when that episode aired. Now... The most recent season, like normally, I, when I don't agree with a choice they've made, I can kind of see where they're coming from. And uh, really, it's a case of they're often making uh, the best, best of a bunch of bad choices. Uh, because the, the format of the show doesn't really allow them to keep all eight initial nominees all the way to the end. Although it would be interesting if they got a season where the drivers were that bad, all of them, that they needed to do that. But they haven't done that. Uh, although they've had three uh, nominees left at the end every season, if I recall correctly. So that means they've had one episode where they graduated nobody. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, you know, so, so they do kind of play with their um, premise from time to time. They've had a couple of astounding successes over the years as well. Uh, for instance, uh, I can't remember which season it was, but sometime back there was this fellow called Arun who muddled through the entire uh, series Um Making a hash of challenges, uh, not quite getting there, that sort of thing. Uh, and then it came to the final challenge, which is always a drive on public streets with Andrew as the navigator. We're going to say, turn at this street, turn at that street, that sort of thing. And Arun, he was on the final episode, one of the final three that year. He gets out on his on the final drive, and he does it perfectly. Totally at odds with his performance in the rehab center over the course of the episodes. Sure, he demonstrated some improvement over the time, but he got out on the public roads, and he did almost perfectly. Well, actually, he did perfectly. He didn't commit any moving violations. He was... Shoulder checking, changing lanes properly. Uh, they actually showed him talking to Andrew and shoulder checking at the same time. So it was, uh, that one was uh, the poster for success. Uh, they had a driver with no skills really coming in. And at the end, I would be proud to share the road with him. So, you know, they do do good. Uh, you know, that's a substantially uh, uh, more obvious uh, result than uh, a lot of them historically. But, you know, it, it was gratifying to see. 
Uh, this season, I mostly agreed with their choices along the way. Uh, you know, occasionally one of the experts would have an opinion that just didn't seem to make any sense or jive with reality or whatever. Um, but mostly the final result was reasonable. I, I could see where they were coming from. And I don't expect to agree with every choice they make. Uh, after all, uh, they actually see more than we do. We only see the highlight reel. And depending what the editors do, they might leave out something that's uh, an important factor in the decisions that are actually shown on the air. However, this season, I think their final choice for Canada's Worst Driver was a monumental screw-up. Monumental. Well, there's no doubt that all three of the finalists this year, Shalom, Polly, and Jillian, are bad drivers. Or at least not good drivers. I don't believe they made the right choice. I can understand why they graduated Shalom as the final graduate. I think he will honestly improve as time goes on. Uh, and he has improved from the start of the series to the finale. And given the issues faced by Jillian and the lousy driving by Polly, there's no question he was not the worst driver. But when it came down to Polly and Jillian, they chose Jillian. And this is the monumental screw-up. Why is that a monumental screw-up? Well, first of all, Polly's drive, final drive, she had, uh, what was it, 11 moving violations, uh, totaling some ridiculous number of dollars, over a thousand. Okay, so why was it a monumental screw-up? Well, let's take Polly's uh, final drive. She committed moving violations. That's normal for the final drive. You end up with relatively minor infractions in a lot of cases. Relatively minor. They're bad, but relatively minor. But she stopped at a green light on a busy road to make a right-hand turn from about the third lane over. And then, when the light turned red, she made the turn. And she did this because she was going to miss the turn in the instructions Andrew was giving. Instead of proceeding through, turning around somehow, getting back to the intersection, she stopped dead in the middle of the road. That's three moving violations all at once. Running the red, failing to proceed, and an improper turn. And I think they only listed two of them. So, I mean, I've actually, I think they did list all three. So, three moving violations in one incident. You know, that's pretty bad. And over the course of the show, she has historically floored it, put her foot on the gas when something goes wrong. Never the brake. She also has admitted to going to a safe place mentally when things go wrong. So basically checking out when the going gets bad. Yeah, that's not good for driving. You, 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 you have to be mentally present. Jillian, on the other hand, had a meltdown before getting in the car at all. She didn't actually want to do the final drive. After more than an hour of coaxing on Andrew's part, she finally did start the drive. And it required a lot of coaxing and coaching from Andrew to actually get through it. But here's the thing. They didn't show a huge number of moving violations. Now, maybe they didn't show them. Maybe they were there. But 
I'm thinking they probably were, there probably weren't a lot of serious ones. And coaching notwithstanding, uh, she did reasonably well. She backed into a parking stall fairly uh, decisively. Um, all that stuff. And later, at the end, they went five minutes or so away. Andrew left her there with GPS, and she had to navigate back to the, fi the starting point. Uh, she did reasonably well with that. She got confused at the first turn, for sure. Uh, um, but I'm thinking she didn't get too terribly confused elsewhere um, because they didn't show any substantial issues, and not even in a montage. And, you know, that uh, leads me to believe that her solo five-minute or so drive at the end wasn't that bad. Uh, sure, she had an issue at the first stop sign where she needed to make a left turn. She was confused by the intersection. There was a do not enter sign for an unrelated uh, driveway or frontage road and things like that. But she did eventually proceed. She proceeded in a safe manner, if not strictly kosher. And she arrived back at the starting point. So... Does that make her the worst driver? I don't think so. You see, at the start of the season, she had some serious anxiety problems. Like she wouldn't even have bothered getting in the car at all, coaxing or no, really, to drive solo in an unknown city. She wouldn't have. And when she did, she would have been driving really slowly or uh, dangerously as a result uh, all over the, uh, the whole area. But that's changed a lot since the start. At the start, she was shouting at her fiancé all the time in the car, things like that. Like she was a right bitch behind the wheel. And a lot of that has mellowed out quite a lot. And during the challenges in, on the closed courses in the rehab center, she did better when she was driving solo than when she had passengers. Okay, good. Now, I honestly think that if you remove the extra stressors from the show, the performance anxiety, because it's, all, it's before all of Canada pretty much, and the cameras, and uh, the experts judging, and uh, the forced uh, participation in the challenges and all of that, I think her driving would actually improve quite a bit more. Uh, so I think when she's back home, she's going to do a lot better. I do not think that even though Polly recognizes now that she's a terrible driver, I do not think her driving will improve. I think she's still going to make those crazy moving violations continually. So I think the experts are totally out of touch with reality when they crowned Jillian over Polly as Canada's worst driver. And as far as I can tell, that was based solely on her lack of performance during the final challenge. As far as I can tell, it's based solely on the fact it took over an hour of Andrew coaxing and coaching and demonstrating the first bit of the course and so on to her to get her to actually drive it at all. And Cam did comment that that wasn't fair to the other two. But here's the thing. The other two didn't have an anxiety attack getting into the car and starting out. They didn't. The issue Jillian has is totally different. It's not a technical competency issue, although there may be some skill issues there. It's a psychological one, primarily. And what Andrew was doing, and Shamala along the way, and Tim, uh, Shamala, the uh, therapist, Tim, the driving instructor, and Andrew, they've all been doing the right things to try and get her through this. 
so uh, I do think that uh, Cam's opinion had a huge amount of weight with the other experts, and I think his uh, opinion on it may well have swayed the uh, judges. Certainly, I think it swayed Andrew's opinion. So, of the two, I would say they should have crowned Polly, not Jillian. Uh, and I think that by doing it the way they did, by crowning Jillian, it was a monumental screw-up. Uh, basically, it was a sucker punch to the gut after she was already down. And I don't think that's going to do her any good. Though, that's not what the show's about. The show's about driving. Even from a purely driving point of view, Jillian has better skills. She's still mentally present, even when she has the meltdown. And when she got nervous and confused that stop sign in that final drive, she was still present enough that when the person behind her honked, she made a decision and went in what appeared to be a safe manner. And I do not believe that Polly has that presence of mind. So I would personally much rather be on the road with Jillian, who has at least some presence of mind under the stressful situations, than with Polly who goes off to a safe place in La La Land and presses the gas in a dangerous situation. Now, I'm not the only one that thinks this was a monumental screw-up. There's a number of tweets that say the same thing, basically. But I think the biggest tell was Shamala's reaction when other experts on the panel suggested that Jillian was worse than Polly. I think, though I didn't like Shamala when she first showed up on the show, I think, honestly, that of all five on the panel, of experts, and Andrew does count as an expert these days. He's been doing the show long enough. He he's got to have some kind of a, uh, you know uh, understanding of things. Uh, I think Shamala comes closest to representing the general public on the panel. I think Andrew was originally intended to be that representative on the panel, but I think honestly. They need to expand the panel some. Uh, I think Cam is losing touch with the general, overall, real issues behind road safety. Uh, he's a legal expert, so he tends to uh, get onto the rule of law kick. And, he's, and because the show's been going on so long and he's been on the show since the start... He's been, he's been starting to apply precedents from previous shows instead of actually examining the current uh, contextual uh, indicators. Uh, so I think maybe uh, there's... Maybe they need to... Uh, I, my original thought was, Cam's way out of touch. We need to get, get him off the show. But you know what? Now that I've thought about it, I don't think that's the right choice. I think they need to expand the panel. And they need to have... Instead of it being a panel of experts, they need some non-expert, general public type people on there. Uh, 
And they need that to balance out the experts' uh, opinions. Um, because the general public, while they're not experts, they do share the road. And even if these experts don't, these extra general public uh, citizen uh, members uh, don't have the same weight in the voting as the experts, they can serve as a check on the overly technical opinions and so on that may come from uh, experts in the field of driving. Uh, they, can, uh, they can give that counterpoint of which one would you rather be on the road with. And I think that would be interesting information for them to provide. So maybe you keep the, five, the panel of five, you know, Andrew, Tim, Shamala, Philippe, and Cam, and then you add, say, uh, I don't know, um, four or five uh, uh, random citizens that are different episode to episode. So you get, uh, get a number of these, and you poll them uh, in each episode about uh, who they would rather be on the road with. Uh, and if you use a preferential uh, voting system, uh, so it's not first past the post, you get a reasonable uh, general idea on what people think. So if they did that and presented that to the experts in addition to what the drivers themselves have to say, I think that might give a, a good counterpoint and it might uh, cause some of the uh, some of the decisions to be to appear at least a little more measured. Now, to be fair, they do not show us the entire deliberation. Uh, they cherry pick things, and it's not clear how much of what they show us is staged, but. They do uh, they, you know they, they do uh, substantially uh, reduce what they show us. They don't show us everything the drivers say to the panel. They don't show us everything the drivers do with the instructors. They don't show us even necessarily the entire challenge performances. Uh, we just get the highlight reel, and it's a biased highlight reel at that because it's picked by the producers. So, you know, and that's fair. They're trying to make entertaining television. That's one of the reasons they're still on the air. And it's a risk with any kind of show like that. But so to be fair, maybe there's information that we don't have that makes their choice of Jillian as the worst driver makes sense. But based on what they showed us, it was a monumental screw-up. Now, if that information that um, balances it more exists and wasn't shown, that then is not a problem of, for, of the experts, but rather a problem with the editors. So I'm actually kind of hoping that it is an editing problem in this case, but I don't think it is based on both Shamala and Jillian's reactions. So realistically, I think this year they screwed up big time. And I, I think at the very least they should take a close look at their judging criteria for the final 
determination of the worst driver and maybe examine their judging criteria for the rest of the show, too, on who they graduate. Maybe, just maybe, they should reconsider the format somewhat. Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know what kind of change the format would work. I think the format's probably about as good as it can be. But maybe, just maybe, they need more than eight episodes in a season. Just maybe. Uh, granted, there's a cost to production, so, you know, there you have it. But maybe they need more than eight episodes. But at the very least, I think they need to be more transparent with their judging criteria, with their deliberations. I think if they did that, there'd be a lot less potential backlash. But, yeah, it's hard to say, you know. Either way, what they should have done, in my opinion, this year, is certainly they shouldn't have graduated Jillian. Uh, that psychological thing does need addressing, and that needs she needs to continue to address it back home. So, I do kind of agree with Jillian and Polly being the final two. But if they felt that Jillian needed the trophy, there's no way they should have let Polly off. Uh, granted, Polly didn't graduate, but really, she should have been she should have been holding the trophy. And I think what they, if they really, really felt Jillian should have had the trophy, they should have just given it to both of them. Now, that's a bit of a cop-out, really. Really, when you get down to it. That's a bit of a cop-out. So maybe they do get some props for making a decision. But, you know, I think it was the wrong one. And that's really what it comes down to. And I hope they can come back, maybe with a special at some point, and explain themselves clearly. Show the whole deliberation. Show, show, back up their choice. Because, as it stands right now, they've lost touch with reality. And... Really? Uh, now, still, I'm still going to watch season 12. So, you know, let's be fair there. Still going to watch season 12. Uh, is the real information con contained in the show is brilliant. It's great. But I really hope season 12 does better with their decision making than season 11 did. That's all for this time. Thanks for watching.